tongue ties and what to do about them. This is something that's really interested me for a long time. When I started a conversation with my father and I thought, well, we might as well record it because it, it is our views and it's interesting. Yes, I, I'm concerned that um, so many people do not agree with me that tongue ties are essentially um, environmental things. They feel they are genetic. I think that during the embryonic growth, all our various tissues come together and they do so during growth at different rates. Some children finish with quite obvious ties to their tongues, cheeks and lips and others have none. But I feel that that did not exist in primitive times. If it had, it would have affected the alignment of the teeth in the same way as it does today and there would be signs of that in the prehistoric remains but the prehistoric remains show no sign of malocclusion therefore I feel these tongue tries disappeared or didn't exist in those days. Okay, so just from picking up on one point you're saying, you're saying that uh, it didn't cause the types of malocclusions you see with tongue ties. Yes. So you're thinking tongue ties does cause a certain type of malocclusion? Oh, yes. What, such as? Well, mainly it allows for the collapse of the maxilla because the tongue can't lift up. But it is also responsible for a lot of anterior open bites because the child pushes the tongue forward between the front teeth. Rather than raising the tongue as much as yes. the mouth, you could say. Yeah. Um, okay, because what I've, I've uh, we'll, we'll come to this, but what I've noticed is I've got quite a few children who are really quite tongue-tied. Yes. Where I've got really quite a good result. Yes. Now, what I notice is when they tie, put the, close their mouth together, the tongue gets restricted in the distance it can go, but it can still get onto the roof of the mouth with a closed mouth. Yeah. Quite happily. So I wonder how much these individuals are held back with their tongue tie. An interesting point. I do think with the modern methods we have available, we can achieve straight teeth in almost every patient regardless of So are you ties. talking about if we're using um, orthodontic type? Yes, but even with no. removable appliances. So orthotropic type of appliance. Yes. So basically you can get straight teeth. Yes. Almost regardless of whether or not they have a tongue tie. Um, usually. Okay, all right. Now I think we, well, I need to introduce a little bit of backdrop for anyone watching this. About five, six years ago, I didn't hear much about tongue ties really very little about tongue ties. I don't think many people were talking about them and now tongue ties seem to be big news. Now that's quite normal in medicine. We have these flavour of the moment. You'll suddenly see conferences and symposiums filled with a certain topic. It's clearly that flavour of the month. It's the fashionable thing to talk about and that's not that unusual. I'm, tongue ties seem to have stayed very popular for now quite a length of time. We're calling them tethered oral tissue, TOTS. Yes. Now, it was interesting. I think we, we, a lot of people came to some thoughts at the same time. And I know I was thinking this thought and suddenly I'd written about it online and I suddenly saw a lot of other people speaking it. And that's when I was thinking about why tongue ties seem to have increased. And I think you know, when we're in the process of development, fetal development, the um, embryological development, at one period you're, you're, we're wept, our hands are wept, and clearly this webbing disappears. So clearly we have selective apoptosis occurring, that is apoptosis cell death occurring in specific sites to allow normal development. And the lack of this apoptosis may represent a tongue tie. Yeah. Thank now, you. what I were discussing a lot of things, but what I'd, I'd come to this is, was this feeling that uh, folic acid was involved with the control of growth of midline structures. Yes, that's a good so hypothesis. A lack of folic acid was involved with d developmental issues of yeah. the um, spine. I know that one of my spinal processes hasn't, hasn't 
didn't form. So around my spinal column, one of the vertebral elements is missing. So it's a U shape rather than a complete circle. And so that's a slight lack of development. Now clearly that can be very damaging so we've had a blanket recommendation for pregnant mothers to take folate and I was watching a lecture by someone saying that the type of folate we were giving isn't the right type of folate. So rather than taking supplements you should just eat um, greens. Look, I mean, spinach and stuff is packed with folate. So rather than taking supplements, just eat spinach. It's a much better way to present it. Also, rather than coming at an instant punch when you take a pill, this folate gently gets removed from the structure of the um, material it's in you know, as you digest that material. So this gentle presentation of folate is much better than taking a pill and also yeah. it comes in a better form. That was the suggestion of the lecture yeah. and I just remember watching that and I was just thinking folate, well this is this substance that's involved with the uh, control of these midline structures and maybe if we're giving too much folate it's helping the completion of all these midline structure elements and preventing or tipping the balance to reducing the apoptosis of midline structures and I think so it was, I was just interested that I saw the same comment there after I posted it coming from several, several, several other people who I'm sure hadn't read my comment. I'm sure they'd come up with that decision completely by themselves. Yes, I, I personally try to look for simple answers. Yes, I, know. I think what happened to primitive man, the, the simple and most obvious difference between us and them, but they, they breastfed, sorry, breastfed for um, three, often four years. Yep. And that required huge activity of the tongue and lips from a very young age at a very intense level because the child had to get all their new nutrition yep. from their mother's breast. Well, at and least that all of it hard the first, At least the first six to nine months. Uh, at least. At least. I mean, I think you might get an element of nutrition from non-breast after that. If not a lot, but an element. So you're suggesting that the functional requirement yeah. of that infant baby yes. meant that they would overcome or remove the restriction. restriction. So yeah. the restriction would disappear yeah. if they functioned. Okay. It was interesting because I was, we had a very interesting case recently and it was a boy who had come from California it's, and re emigrated to the UK. They were actually European parents, yeah. lovely parents, Indian father, uh, Scandinavian mother. and. They had seen, um, they were referred to someone by Joey Mola to have a tongue tie release. The tongue tie release was ineffective and they had a second, a revision done. When they came to see me, their tongue tie was almost completely tied. So they've had, now Joy Mola would never have sent them to an a incompetent person. So they've had at least one competent person, I imagine that you needed a revision, two very competent clinicians who released this tongue tie. Then when they've come to see me, this tongue tie is completely um, attached. Yeah. So almost, almost to the tip. So I mean, a crazy and also a lot of scarring in a very bad situation. And since I've been working on them, what I've noticed is that tongue tie's got a little bit better, all by itself. Yeah. So here's one tongue tie with twice it re reattached. Now, with a change in, I've made a huge amount of tongue volume. They're clearly having to wear the training appliance, and he's having to follow my exercise program on his swallowing technique. And that seems to have been, well, it clearly has been more beneficial than two tongue tie operations. Yeah. That interests me. 